Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my video tutorial series for the game Damned. In this video I will attempt to explain the basics of the game, what it is, what the goals of a match are. Also I'll share some info regarding the controls, the insanity system and the traps. And lastly I will try to give you some helpful advice. Damned is a multiplayer horror experience for 2 to 5 players where you take the role of either one of the four human characters referred to as the survivors or a nightmarish apparition haunting a place, which is simply referred to as the monster. As a survivor, your objective is to find keys or other objects which will allow you to explore further areas of the map until you find the exit key. While simultaneously avoiding the monster. As a monster, your objective is to track and murder every single one of the survivors before they reach the exit. Currently, there are two game modes you can play, Classic and Lives. In Classic, every survivor gets one life and once he dies he can only spectate the rest of the survivors, while in Lives game mode, the monster has to kill any of the survivors a set number of times to win. And as long as there are lives remaining, the survivors will be respawning after a short delay. Besides the obvious WASD keys to move in all directions, holding the ALT button while moving will cause you to tiptoe. Holding the control button while moving will make you crouch. While walking, if you tap the SHIFT button you will start sprinting and will only stop once you let go of the W button. Sprint is not infinite, and eventually if you sprint non-stop you will run out of stamina and your character will start gasping for breath, signifying you ran out of stamina. Your stamina restores approximately in ticks of 5 seconds. That means every 5 seconds you didn't sprint you will restore a portion of your stamina. It is said you need 20 seconds of no sprinting before you can fully recover your stamina. Right mouse button toggles your flashlight while enabled, the flashlight consumes battery power and can be refilled by picking up batteries laying around on the level. The left mouse button is used to interact with objects. Batteries, keys and other objects can be picked up by simply left clicking them, while doors, table drawers and so forth need to be dragged open. Try approaching a door and once it has a yellow outline, you may left click and hold your left mouse button, then drag your mouse in a direction you want the door to go. Most doors can only be opened into one direction, so you need to pay attention to that. Play around with that a bit until you get the hang of it, since it isn't exactly easy the first time you try. Last but not least, if you have a working microphone plugged in, when holding down the C button you will be able to speak to other players in-game via voice chat. You can rebind the button to something else in the options menu. If you press the enter button, you will be able to type in the in-game chat with other survivors. The monster cannot read the chat, but he can still hear you if you use the voice chat. Since the update 1.0a, the insanity system was introduced into the game. Whenever you are alone, whenever your flashlight is turned off, whenever you fail to open a door, as in you do not have a key and you hear a distinctive sound of the door not opening, whenever you trigger a trap, whenever you see the monster, and whenever someone of the other survivors dies, you get insanity points. Insanity effects and how often they occur are determined by the amount of insanity points you accumulated. Some insanity effects only occur at the later stages when you have a lot of insanity points. And at the very late stages of the game, some of the effects start overlapping with each other. The amount of points is not displayed anywhere on the screen. One of the possible effects you can get is blackout. 
Blackouts is one of the more dangerous effects as it darkens your screen, severely hindering you from seeing the monster. And it is especially dangerous when playing against the Phantom, as that guy is already fairly difficult to see on his own. Next up is Paranoia. It is the most harmless effect, as all it does is make your flashlight flicker uncontrollably. Since it makes no noise, and your teammates don't see the flickering either, it is just your imagination, hence the name Paranoia. Whenever your screen turns black and white and you hear ghostly breathing, you experience the monster presence hallucination. The breathing sound is the same as the Lurga does when he passes through you in the ghost form, and since that didn't actually happen, hence the name. In essence, it is fairly harmless. It turns more deadly when playing versus the Lurker, but in all other cases it is mostly a distraction. As soon as you stop hearing everything except for an intense beeping noise, be wary. If that happens, you're experiencing deafness. Deafness along with blackout is fairly deadly as it completely blocks off your hearing for the duration of the beeping noise. At random points late into a match, your character will randomly start gasping for breath and you won't be able to sprint even though you haven't sprinted for a while. When that happens, you experience a stamina drain. Sometimes, usually later into a match, a trap would go off suddenly near you even though there is no trap nowhere near you. Oftentimes the trap that goes off doesn't even exist on the level. That is a case of fake trap hallucination. Along with deafness and blackout, fake trap hallucination is one of the deadliest insanity effects in the game, as it feeds you completely false information and can lead to your death very quickly. Whenever suddenly an angry face of one of the characters appears on your screen, you experience a jump scare hallucination. It has no purpose other than to distract you. As soon as you hear weird rumbling noise, you experience a fear effect. Fear randomly disables one of your controls, like W, A, S, D, Shift, Control, and so on buttons, and can be considered severely deadly. If you have the time, check which button got disabled, as sometimes it is the one you need most when you are in danger. Last of the insanity effects that are in-game is the undead arms hallucination. You will hear a weird bone cracking sound along with a rumbling noise and see a bunch of arms stick out of the earth trying to grab anything in their reach. The arms are impassable and individual to each player, hence the hallucination part. If one of the arms manages to grab you, you will experience a stamina drain. And on top of that you will also be slowed a lot until you get away from the arm. Across the level a number of traps are scattered around. Almost every object you cannot interact with could be a trap. Be wary of things such as old heaters, broken toilets, Ouija boards, lamps, grandfather clocks, and so on and so forth. Learn what type of objects are actually traps and remember which noises they make. Some of the traps are louder and some of them are more silent, so do pay attention. Here are some of the traps. As a survivor, always be on the move. Fully check any room you find, try to open all the table Don't drawers, check like all the you. places you can think of where a key or something else useful could be. Check buckets, check big clocks on the floor, you can open the little doors on them. In kitchens, open stoves, always be vigilant of your surroundings. If you wander into a room, try to pay attention what is in there and distinguish the traps. Pay attention to your escape routes and how they function. As a rule of thumb, if you're standing next to a trap for an extended period of time without anything happening, like if you're checking some kitchen sinks and next to you on the table is a small table clock and then all of a sudden the clock goes off, usually you are in trouble. Search for a place to hide, try to protect yourself. Remember which keys you've already used and which keys usually go where. Most of the keys can be used only once. Try to communicate with other players as much as possible and try to share every bit of info you might have. Remember the exit conditions for the map so you won't end up searching for unnecessary items when you could already escape. As the monster, it mostly comes down to playing mind games and thinking like the survivor. Track their progress if possible, assume where they might fed it next and catch them by surprise. Getting good as a monster isn't difficult. What makes you the best monster is when you know what the survivor thinks. And that was it for the basics. Thank you for watching.
please leave your comments and feedbacks in the comment section below.